The next item of business is an urgent question. Call Michelle Ballantyne. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government for what reason it did not inform the Parliament in last week's statement that severe disablement <coughs> allowance will remain reserved and administered by the DWP. Shirley Ann Somerville. Well, can I thank Ms Ballantyne for her question and it might help if I start by clearing up a misunderstanding in her question. Let me be clear, none of the 11 benefits included in the Scotland Act will remain reserved to the DWP. Last Thursday, I informed Parliament that, all six Scottish, that the Scottish Government will take responsibility for all 11 devolved benefits from the 1st of April 2020. That remains the case, and it includes severe disablement allowance. That means all funding decisions, delivery decisions and policy decisions are taken by the Scottish Government. The arrangements for the delivery of the severe dis disablement allowance were set out in documents published on Thursday and referred to in my statement, and in a letter to the Social Security Committee of this Parliament, also sent on Thursday, and also published in a public Q&A, also on Thursday. Michelle Ballantyne. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer, but the reality is there was no mention of severe disablement allowance in the actual statement that was given on Thursday. And let's face it, the reality here is this is an, another devolved power that you're asking the DWP to administrate. Now, you knew the circumstances of this benefit two years ago in 2016. So it's taken two years for you to decide that you don't actually want to do the administration of it. So let me ask you a straightforward question. Because actually, you say you can devolve a whole new, and create a whole new state in 18 months, but it has taken you two years to make this decision. So let me ask you, when did you make the decision? Did you already know when you made your statement last week? When exactly was it made? And when did you tell everybody? I think that was a few questions. Shirley Ann Somerville. Well, as I laid out in my original answer, I told the Parliament uh, last week in my statement in the 11 policy position papers that were published alongside it and in a letter to the Social Security Committee, of which Michelle Ballantyne is, of course, a member. And as we move through the process of devolving benefits to Scotland, we take our decisions based on consultation with people with lived experience and the consultation that we did with those with lived experience was they ensure the safe and secure trans transition of all 11 benefits but also the transformation of the benefits that are causing most anxiety and stress to those in the current system like disability assistance which has an application process viewed by those going through it designed to catch people out and an inhumane yeah, system yeah. of assessments. Yeah. That will be our next priority within the devolution of benefits. Now, as I set out, as I said, in man multiple channels last week, we chose to deliver SDA through an agency agreement with the DWP. It's a benefit which has approximately 2,000 claimants it has been closed since 2001 and in the consultation which we do before we make decisions on how we'll deliver benefits no one suggested any changes and no one suggested any particular issues that we needed to address and that is why the priority will go to disability assessments where the maximum damage is being done by the DWP. And the particular challenge with SDA is it is also closely linked to, of course, the pension system, which reserve is, remains reserved to Westminster. Establishing a separate payment system would put claimants at risk. It is a prime example of why it would be easier to have full responsibility of Social Security rather than having to work with the complex and outdated DWP systems. Michelle Ballantyne, and may I remind you to speak through the chair. Thank you, presiding officer. Well, I, I don't know whether I'm thanking the cabinet secretary for that answer, but the reality is that this is like smoke and mirrors, isn't it? Because you're actually saying that you want everything devolved, but actually you're increasingly pushing things back to be administered under agreement by the DWP. So two years to consult on a benefit that's closed and has 2,000 claimants. 
So can the sec Cabinet Secretary tell me how much money has been spent preparing for the devolution of SDA so far? And how much will it cost for the DWP to continue to administer it because it is yet another devolved benefit that they're asking the DWP to do? Shalane Somerville. Well, we will ensure that all the derg agency agreements that are agreed between the DWP and the Scottish Government um, are done to ensure best value for the Scottish taxpayer. But can I gently say to Michelle Ballantyne, and I made this offer to her directly last week, I appreciate that we will have disagreements around how Social Security will be devolved to Scotland and the policy decisions that we'll make. But I think we have a shared responsibility within this chamber to look very seriously at what we can do and what we should do differently. Can I direct her, not to, to my words, but to a blog that was written by Chris Cregan from the Scottish Commission for Learning Disability after he uh, watched the, the statement to Parliament last week. And he said, disagreement is as much part of, um, of the game of politics as consensus. But so is striking the right tone, and so is understanding the complexity beside, behind the sloganising that grabs the headlines. And I, and I gently say, once again to Michelle Ballantyne, if she has a realistic alternative to a different way that we want to do SDA in Scotland, I'm more than happy to hear it. But please let's get away from the headline grabbing and the sloganising and putting fear into the 2,000 people who rely on the benefits through SDA and get on with delivering a credible social security Scotland that ensures a secure and safe transition and also a transformation of the benefits under the DWP that are harming people so much just now. Uh, we've hardly any time left. I'll take Mary Fee. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can, can I ask how much is the Cabinet Secretary going to have to pay the DWP to deliver these benefits instead of spending that money to support severely disabled people? And more broadly, what are the estimated costs of the agency arrangements with the DWP that will be in place until all devolved benefits fully transition to so Social Security Scotland? Because this information was not included in Thursday's statement. Well, it wasn't included within the statement because we are consulting on our priorities as, as we go ahead. But as I've said around agency agreements um, in the past, it is absolutely imperative that we deliver those to ensure that we have good administration of those in Scotland and that we work with the DWP on what is a joint policy. Now, you know, Mary Fee talks about how, m how much changes would be made Excuse to me, SDA. Cabinet Secretary. Mr Tompkins, please do not sit at the back and shout over to the benches when you've not actually been taking part in this question time already. Thank you, Mr Tompkins. Shirley Ann Summerall. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, there have been no policy su uh, changes suggested as part of the consultation process, and it was very important that we listen to those with the lived experience to determine what was the best way forward for, for SDA. So we will take forward the agency agreements with the DWP to ensure that we pay for the administering of those benefits. Uh, but the safe and secure uh, transition of this is absolutely imperative and we will do that with full consultation with those of, with lived experience of this benefit and of all others. Bob Doris. An officer, I can confirm myself and fellow committee members, including Michelle Ballantyne, were informed on the 28th of February regarding severe disablement oh. allowance. Oh. Does oh. the Cabinet Secretary agree oh. that this non-revelation regarding severe disablement allowance by Michelle Ballantyne may have more to do with the Tory diversionary tactics, given that our Social Security Committee will take evidence tomorrow morning on the scandal of the UK government's pension credit cuts, Could you please which will cost up to £7,000 a year for up to 10% of pension credit claimants. Diversionary oh. tactics. Exactly. Here, here, Bob. Shirley Ann Somerville. Well, I, I thank the convener of the committee for uh, once again establishing that that letter was sent last week. It is very, very important that I do listen to 
genuine suggestions around social security from all parts of the chamber. Um, this is a, a, an area of the subject which I would like to seek maximum consensus on. But I think Mr Doris is quite right to point out that it's very difficult to take lessons from a Conservative Party that administers the DWP and the inhumane PIP system particularly to take any lessons on how they should, uh, I should treat those with a disability um, and our carers within our country, we have seen an absolutely startling lack of an ability for the DWP to look after and support those people. And that's exactly what we are determined to do within Social Security in Scotland. That concludes the urgent question. Uh, can I just say to the Chamber, we don't often have urgent questions, but the key thing here is question. This is not an opportunity for people to stand up and have a 10 minute debate. It's about asking questions and it's about getting answers. There were many people who wanted to come into that urgent question who weren't able to because of the length of time, initial questions and indeed answers took. Something to bear in mind for the future, please. And we'll move on to the next item of business. <laughs>